Dun dun dun! Scary music. Today we are going to talk about high school science. Indeed, we are going to talk about high school chemistry. This is the subject everyone warned you about when you started your precious little kindergartner and you said I was going to homeschool. Then everyone said to you, well, what about when they get to high school and they're doing like chemistry and geometry and all that? Here, and we are going to talk about how our family is teaching the seventh high schooler in our family's homeschool chemistry. I'm going to be taking you through, giving you a look inside two resources that we base our chemistry course off of, showing you what they look like, how we use them, the pros and cons of the tools that we use, and let's get started. All right, let's dive right into the two main resources that we are using with high school chemistry right now with our 10th grader. Um, the core of our chemistry curriculum is this Exploring Creation with Chemistry 2nd Edition. We initially purchased this from Sunlight together with the Solutions and Tests book as well as the Supplies Kit for all of the experiments in the book and a schedule. So I will go ahead and let you know right at the beginning, this exact book is no longer sold by Sunlight. We purchased this back when I was doing high school chemistry. This was my textbook when I was growing up. It's now being used by the seventh kid in the seven and all family. Um, so that is the that is the story behind this. So I won't necessarily go too much in depth of exactly you know details and specifics of this book because it has been replaced um, sunlight now sells the third edition of exploring creation with chemistry which has different authors than um, dr jl weil uh, but it also sells a different book that is by dr weil called something like discovering design with chemistry which is ex extremely different name than exploring creation with chemistry <laughs> Um, so let's just take a, take a little look of generally what you can expect because I'm, I'm just, you know, making a blatant assumption, which I think is fairly accurate, that the newer Exploring Creation book, as well as the newer um, Dr. Weil book, is generally set up in a pretty similar way and you can expect similar things. So it's divided into modules on different themes. And within each module, there will be reading as well as experiments. There will be practice questions. At the end of the module, you get to review questions. And then you have a test at, after going through all the review at the end of your module. Now, chemistry is a very math-based science, as we know. You want to be very solid in your algebra before you start chemistry, that's gonna make it a lot less frustrating for you. So you can see there's on your own questions that you're doing throughout. Um, so this course is designed to be a very com you know, normal introductory high school chemistry program. Now, if you read reviews, up, reviews on this, you're gonna see a lot of mixed reviews. For some people, it was very doable, very accessible, understandable, um, and that was my experience with the book. From my personal perspective of this book, it, it would be impossible <laughs> to not understand um, the information or to struggle with doing the problems because to me, it's almost overly preparing you and overly kind of s explaining to you exactly how each element of chemistry works at each element that they're covering, how to solve each problem. So they give you an example problem and then you have to do a problem on your own that's very similar to the example and the problems get gradually more complex as you go through. I remember with great delight in my chemistry and advanced chemistry courses, which the advanced chemistry is the sequel to this one, um, just having pages and pages of equations that you're, as you're figuring out, because this is very math based. Um, but other people have had a very different experience. So you can tell there is a lot of reading to do. For some science lovers, this is actually a little bit too conversational. I appreciated the conversationalness 
of the text, um, but for others, for some students have actually struggled to understand this on their own. I believe this is designed to be done independently, and in my experience, it 100% can be done independently. For me, it was easy. Most of my siblings have done this independently with more or less success, depending on their level of interest in chemistry and science. Definitely student motivation matters a little bit. How we are using it right now is that my mom actually is doing the, both of these chemistries. She's sitting right alongside my sister. They read it together. My sister works through the problems and goes through the experiments. And my mom is a big part of it for her. That's largely because my mom is no longer in the season of juggling many, many, many children at the same time, and many young children, you know, getting to that point where she has, she, she treasures this time that she's able to focus on just her older, um, her high school student who doesn't necessarily need mom so much anymore, but can really benefit from going, going through these chapters together and discussing them. But I do wanna say this book with its chapters, with its problems. I'll show you, there, there's a figure. They have, they have nice illustrations showing what they're talking about. Here's an example problem and they walk you through, right through the example. Don't be scared guys, this is totally doable if you're not like super rusty. Once you start reading it, it's totally fine. <laughs> I know um, high school sciences are something that really intimidate a lot of um, new homeschoolers, but guys, you don't just jump into high school science. You've been working up the whole way. So by the time you get there, it's not so bad. You know, right now it feels bad because you've probably been out of high school, you know, a long time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this, this was what we used solely for chemistry with the first five kids in my family. For kid number six and seven, we have added in this. This is not necessarily, you know, necessary. It's totally separate and different. This is Life of Fred Chemistry, and I wouldn't say this first book can be used as a just plain introductory chemistry course. This one I don't think could just be used independently by a student to introduce themselves to chemistry on their own. This does not have tests. This does not have experiments, although the nature of the stories in Life of Fred, um, as my mom joked, it actually teaches a lot about lab safety because there's always terrible things going wrong in the lab. And there's always people doing really dumb things in the lab. So you learn from the experiences of the people in Life of Fred. Um, but if you are unfamiliar with Life of Fred, I do have several videos on their early readers and their early um, math curriculum. I may at some point do a video on their high school curriculum or high school math curriculum. I wanted to show chemistry in this though because this has been a very cool and challenging uh, addition to our chemistry routine. I'm just gonna take a minute to show you the contents right here because it may surprise you. <laughs> the contents, the contents in the Exploring creation with chemistry were very normal, I would say. <laughs> and this table of contents is already going to be a little alarm for you right here that this is not your average chemistry textbook. There's definitely some unexpected things in there. We, we have melting wood, you can see. So if you take the time to look at that, you can tell uh, yeah, here. <laughs> Why you shouldn't tell students exactly what to do. You can tell the um, unique approach already in the table of contents. Uh, but Life of Fred is a story-based um, curriculum. So you have different chapters. You read through a chapter and then at the end of the chapter you have a your turn to play section. And just on the other side of the page they have the complete solutions to the your turn to play. So if you have a child who, strugg <laughs> who struggles with you know, cheating themselves and just looking up answers rather than trying to figure them out and trying to take shortcuts, Life of Fred's design can be very hard for a student like that to use because the answers are right on the opposite side of the page. 
if you have a child who does not struggle with that and are is actually curious to find out how to solve something and try it on their own, it's no problem. Um, but I'll just give you, this is, this footnote right here on the very first page is an example of what Life of Fred is like. Always read the footnotes. The last part of Shakespeare's Hamlet was very much like this scene in Life of Fred chemistry. Bodies all over the place and lots of blood. This is where I'm saying this, this is a little bit different than your average chemistry textbook. Uh, there are quite a few interesting moments all throughout here, but the main reason we include this, yes, there's story, there's humor, there's, there's just a, a very unique element, but what my mom has found from after years and years and years of teaching chemistry, this book gives you everything that you need. This one right here. It gives the student everything that they need to solve the problem. It's basically, here's the material, you learn the material, you practice the material, and then you're tested on the material. This book is a lot more challenging when it comes to problem solving skills and it includes more of the discovery method. So um, the author will give the student questions and problems to solve that actually they probably don't have every single piece of information and knowledge that they need to solve that problem. And there, he's just gonna, he, he just tries to go a little bit one step past where you could easily get based on what you've learned and tries to challenge you in that way. Um, as my sister who is currently doing this book says, uh, she says doing this book makes you feel like, oh, I'm good at chemistry, chemistry is easy. And then when you do this book, she's like, oh wow, <laughs> I'm not as good at chemistry as I thought I was. It is more challenging. It's definitely something that's going to take you to, it's, it's gonna be a lot more challenging with thinking from a mathematicians and scientist kind of point of view of, okay, I don't know everything, but how can I use what I know or use what I know from another chapter or from another principle and combine it and apply it to actually solve this problem. So that is the unique thing about this. Um, my mom's perspective on this was, she would recommend you could, if you need a chemistry curriculum that your child can do on their own, this works well, or you know the updated versions that are available through Sunlight or through the um, Apologia or Dr. Weil um, websites have the updated versions of this that are similar and very very similar to that this she would say would be very frustrating probably for a student to be doing totally on their own without any parental involvement but because she does this together with my sister they really enjoy this and feel like it's um, able to challenge her more with her chemistry understanding bring her to a deeper problem-solving understanding um, this was also one more footnote I wanted to read you because it represents Life of Fred very well. Can you imagine writing a chemistry book that didn't have poetry, a story, and humor in it? That's impossible to imagine. This last sentence is ironic. Irony means writing the opposite of what we know to be true. It's much more fun to share in the joke of writing. It's impossible to imagine a chemistry book without poetry, a story, and humor in it than to write the boring truth. Virtually every chemistry book is dull. <laughs> so that's just the kind of quirky, quirky humor, um, self-aware humor that is um, you can find all over Fred. It is unique. It is its own beast, but it has been a fun um, accent to our exploring creation with chemistry. To make sure that you can do the labs, I. Like they have a list right in the beginning, if I can find the page. They have a list right in the beginning with all the equipment that you'll need for all the experiments and labs. Um, but I highly recommend just realistically buy a set, <laughs> buy a set of the equipment because it can be tough to find the exact quantities of all those little things. Maybe it's easier today in the age of Amazon for those of you who live in places where Amazon ships. Um, but in general, yeah. I know I know when you're looking at this, it, it, it looks kind of scary, but it's, it's chatty, 
it's chatty, there's a lot of words, there's a lot of explanations. We found it to be quite effective. My current, the current 10th grader is actually thinking of maybe some kind of career in teaching in chemistry or a math type of field. So, that says something, it says something about her. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is what we're doing for chemistry. I hope that this was helpful.